Salutations, Celestial Sightseers. I'm David Fuller. Welcome to Eyes on the Sky. What's up this week? A lot of interesting naked eye phenomena occur. At the beginning of the week, Mars is just one degree away from the first magnitude star Regulus in Leo the Lion. Easy to find. Now, this is a bit of an early bird event, but with sunrise occurring later in the morning hours than a few months ago, you can get up as late as 5 or 6 a.m. and still see the red planet one pinky width at arm's length from the bluish white star. A nice little pairing, certainly, and if you're really ambitious, get up an hour or so earlier with a telescope to see the 94% illuminated disk that sports a rather small 4.6 arc seconds of diameter. That makes it hard to see much, but it may be possible to spy a polar cap and a few of the largest dark markings if no major dust storms are occurring then. On the evening of the 16th, Venus is just a hair farther away than that from the star Antares, with the brilliant white planet just 1.6 degrees from the orange-looking red giant star in Scorpius. There are other opportunities if skies are poor for you on the 16th. The planet skirts nearby the star from our perspective over the course of the work week, from Monday through Friday. Because Venus doesn't offer much more than a phase in terms of telescopic detail, binoculars can enhance the framing of this pair together as you cast your gaze southwest an hour or so after sunset to observe these two celestial objects. And now this week's dark sky fact. As leaves fall, outdoor lighting will travel farther if left unshielded. Consider changing your own outdoor lighting to fully shielded fixtures available at Lowe's, or use silver crown bulbs in post lamps to direct most light down in the area around the light. On Friday the 18th, the moon is full, and for the final time this year, we can spot at least a partial lunar eclipse. This will be visible in its entirety from about Pakistan, back west across Africa and Europe, to Brazil on north to Nova Scotia. For United States observers, the eclipse will already be underway at moonrise, and for everyone, the darkening of the moon will only be penumbral. So we won't see the typical darkening that occurs when the umbral shadow of Earth seems to take a bite out of the moon as it revolves through our planet's shadow stretching out into space. No, what is more likely is a subtle shading and darkening as our natural satellite's inclined orbit takes it slightly above the Earth's plane with the Sun. At maximum eclipse, the Moon will only have about two-thirds of its disk in the penumbral shadow as seen here. So look carefully, it might be easy to miss if you're not looking for it. Did you see it? Let's look again. Ah, there it is! Yeah, it's that subtle. So be on the lookout, it may be easy to miss. And lastly, but not least, and more of a telescopic event, look for a double moon transit on the face of Jupiter during the early morning hours of Saturday, October 19th. North American observers start looking after midnight from the night of the 18th. As the four Galilean moons shuttle back and forth along the equator of the planet, the moons Io and Europa will be casting their shadows onto the gas giant's surface clouds. Zooming in with sufficient magnification, try for 150 to 200 times or more if you can get a clear image, watch for them as they touch the edge of the planet, then transit their way across the disk, and finally leave it. It's a fascinating sequence to observe, especially when two of them are transiting at the same time. See if you can spot this event either from the beginning or sometime during it. Early in the week, 6.0 magnitude Uranus passes within 7 arc minutes of a similarly bright 6.4 magnitude star. And furthest out, Neptune is less than a binoculars field away from 4.2 magnitude Theta Aquarii. That's all for this week. Keep your eyes in the sky and your outdoor lights aimed down so we can all see what's up. I'm David Fuller, wishing you clear and dark skies.